to Rouhani. After reaching the nuclear deal, the Islamic Republic started negotiating with Boeing and Airbus and other aerospatial companies to purchase aircraft for its airlines, such as Iran Air and Mahan Air. But there is some resistance in Washington to the deal that was made recently between Boeing and the Islamic Republic. Last week, Peter Kwanlu of the Iranian American majority wrote an op-ed about blocking the deal between Iran and Boeing. We have Peter Kwanlu today on Iranistas, and I would love to know his idea behind his op-ed. There, there are several reasons to oppose uh, the Boeing uh, deal with Iran's regime. One of the major reasons was uh, that that uh, there have been ac accusations that the Iranian regime, specifically the Revolutionary Guards, have been using uh, passenger airplanes to ferry weapons and materials to uh, you know, Iran's client, the Assad regime, to wage war on civilians. And that was one of the major concerns. Uh, individuals like Senator Rubio of Florida, Representative Roskam of Illinois, um, made a persuasive case on those grounds. And my concern, my major concern was that if this Boeing-Iran deal uh, goes through and the Trump administration allows it to go through, that that will be the start of a gold rush of American business to Iran. And the concern is that once you open the floodgates for business to Iran with American companies, what happens is that those corporations, firms, different entities will want to protect their interests with the Iranian regime. And therefore, they will help create or strengthen a pro-Iranian regime lobby in D.C. Once that happens, it will be very difficult for members of Congress, particularly those coming from districts or states where uh, there's a big demand for job creation. What happens is that, for example, if you're a congressman, and Boeing is in your district, or you're a senator, and Boeing is based in your state and has employs you know several thousands of people. What happens is now you're you're worried about your reelection. You're worried about how am I going to get the votes? How am I going to get the money to run my reelection campaign? And so therefore, it becomes very very difficult to oppose. Uh, the regime, you know, on on human rights abuses, on its support for terrorism, on its um, ballistic and nuclear uh, programs. So that's why I think it's it has to be uh, nipped in the bud right away instead of allowing this uh, trend to continue. There is a big question here. U.S. military is a big customer of Boeing, and at the same time, Iranian airlines have been actually transferring arms and militants to Syria. So the question is, how could Boeing be working for both sides at the very same time? Well, exactly. You know, Boeing is a large, well-respected American company, and they've been doing uh, business with the U.S. government for decades, uh, especially in, in defense. And so, you know, a company that markets itself as, as a true American company and, and providing for the defenses of the country, and, you know, with the image, that they, they have this image of being a patriotic company and a, and a truly American company, it's a little uh, disturbing that they would be willing to uh, jump the gun on this deal. I know there are billions of dollars at stake, but... We also have uh, a regime that was implicated in, you know, directly or indirectly in hundreds of uh, American soldiers' deaths in the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, especially with those IED explosives. And you have a regime that, that sponsors Hezbollah, which has killed, uh, you know, scores of uh, servicemen, Marines. So I think it's a little disturbing that, you know, on the one hand, they want to say we are, you know, an American company that believes in American values, yet they're willing to 
rush to do business and, and they forget that aspect of their identity to make that that money that 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 they want from from Iran's government. You wrote this op-ed uh, basically as an activist and uh, somebody involved in uh, Iranian American issues. Uh, how is your nonprofit going to act in the future regarding uh, businesses with the Islamic Republic of Iran? Uh, right. Uh, well, I don't know if uh, the viewers know. I am stands for Iranian American majority our uh, 501c3 nonprofit organization. And yes, we have, uh, we have relationships with different offices. Um, we also speak to those offices that were involved in trying to block this deal. So uh, we're in contact with them and we're willing to uh, hear them out and have them hear our, our voice and, and our views and to see where we can cooperate on these issues. Because, you know, on the surface, this looks like a, a, a win-win situation. You have American jobs being created, um, you know, f from, from the deal. And the Iranian side can say, look, you know, our, our planes are, are a little old now and people want to fly in, in a convenient uh, manner. But really, it, it could be the beginning of, of this gold rush, as I was saying, creating a formidable pro-regime lobby that, um, you know, activists and organizations like ours will have a very, very difficult time to uh, counter it. And, and the, my fear is that our voice will be uh, it almost extinguished in this kind of situation. Because like I said, you would have senators, congressmen, whose district states depend on job creation, and, and, and they would, it would be very difficult for them to um, stand in the way of business between those companies in their states and the Iranian regime. Your nonprofit deals with human rights issues in Iran as well. Uh, I would love to know that uh, what's your idea about the impact of the Iran deal on human rights in Iran and uh, how would uh, American businesses look at this deal regarding human rights? I mean, we've already seen since the announcement of the nuclear deal, uh, hundreds of executions in Iran. The human rights situation has deteriorated instead of improved. We still have uh, political prisoners rotting away in prison. We also have major former regime figures who are still in prison and, and they have not been released. So I just think that what we see now is only the beginning and something worse is on the horizon if this deal goes through. And it's not an exaggeration to say this. I really believe that um, you know, for the sake of, of, of American interests, for the sake of the Iranian people, I believe this uh, deal should be uh, blocked. بعد از دستیابی جمهوری اسلامی و قدرت های پنج به علاوه یک به توافق هستهی شرکت هواپیما سازی بوئین تبدیل به یک از فروشندگان بزرگ هواپیما به جمهوری اسلامی شد اما تا کنون حتی یک فروند از ساخته های این شرکت به ایران تحویل داده نشده و به نظر میرسه تحویل هواپیما ها به ایران تحویل شما در یادداشت اخیرتون در سایت The Hill نوشتید که بوئینگ بایستی قرارداد خودش با جمهوری اسلامی رو لغو بکنه میتونید در این باره بیشتر توضیح بدید؟ Yes yeah, so there there are several reasons to oppose uh, the Boeing uh, deal with Iran's regime one of the major reasons was uh, that that uh, there have been ac accusations that the Iranian regime, specifically the Revolutionary Guards, have been using uh, passenger airplanes to ferry weapons and materials to uh, you know, Iran's client, the Assad regime, to wage war on civilians. And that was one of the major concerns 
individuals like Senator Rubio of Florida, Representative Roskam of Illinois, um, made a persuasive case on those grounds. And my concern, my major concern was that if this Boeing-Iran deal uh, goes through and the Trump administration allows it to go through, that that will be the start of a gold rush of American business to Iran. And the concern is that once you open the floodgates for business to Iran with American companies, what happens is that those corporations, firms, different entities will want to protect their interests with the Iranian regime. And therefore, they will help create or strengthen a pro-Iranian regime lobby in D.C. Once that happens, it will be very difficult for members of Congress, particularly those coming from districts or states where uh, there's a big demand for job creation. What happens is that, for example, if you're a congressman, and Boeing is in your district or your senator and Boeing is based in your state and has employees, you know, several thousands of people. What happens is now you're you're worried about your reelection. You're worried about how am I going to get the votes? How am I going to get the money to run my reelection campaign? And so therefore it becomes very very difficult to oppose uh, the regime, you know, on on human rights abuses, on its support for terrorism, on its um, ballistic and nuclear uh, programs. So, Ali, can you repeat me? In has that one of the biggest customers of Boeing, the Iranian government, is America. On the other side, we also know that the Islamic Republic, with the help of the Boeing aircraft carrier, which is related to different companies, is sending the Iranian and also ادوات نظامی ارسال میکنه به سوریه با این چگونه میتونه همزمان دو تا مشتری داشته باشه که علیه هم می جنگن well exactly you know Boeing is a large well respected American company and they've been doing uh, business with the US government for decades especially in, in defense and so you know a company that markets itself as as a true american company and and providing for the defenses of the country and you know with the image that they they have this image of being a patriotic company and a, and a truly american company it's a little uh, disturbing that they would be willing to uh, jump the gun on this deal i know there are billions of dollars at stake but we also have uh, a regime that was implicated in you know directly or indirectly in hundreds of uh, american soldiers deaths in the wars in iraq and afghanistan uh, especially with those ied explosives and you have a regime that that sponsors hezbollah which has killed uh, you know scores of uh, servicemen in marines so I think it's a little disturbing that, you know, on the one hand, they want to say we are, you know, an American company that believes in American values, yet they're willing to rush to do business and, and they forget that aspect of their identity to make that, that money that, that, that they want from, from Iran's government. با توجه به اینکه نظارت بر وضعیت حقوق بشر در ایران یک از فعالیت‌های نهاد شماست آیا میتونید به من بگید که بر اساس مشاهدات شما بعد از توافق هسته‌ای وضعیت حقوق بشر در ایران بهتر شده یا بدتر شده I mean we've already seen since the announcement of the nuclear deal uh, hundreds of executions in Iran the human rights situation has deteriorated instead of improved we still have uh political prisoners rotting away in prison we also have major former regime figures who are still in prison and and they have not been released so i just think that what we see now is only the beginning and something worse is on the horizon if this deal goes through and it's not an exaggeration to say this i really believe that um you know for the sake of 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 american interests for the sake of the iranian people i believe this uh, deal should be uh, blocked 
پیش از خداحافظی ذکر یک نکته رو واجه میدونم ما در ایرانیستاز هدفمون خدمت به مخاطبان و شهروندان کشورمون هست بیان واقعیت و هر آن چیزی که میبینیم نه آنکه دوست داریم ببینیم وقتی با افراد مختلفی گفتگو میکنیم ممکنه در تصویر چیزهای وجود داشته باشه که مورد علاقه ما نباشه هفته پیش در گفتگو با دکتر مهدی خزلی وجود پرچم جمهوری اسلامی باعث ناراحتی برخی از مخاطبان خوب شبکه افق شد. حرفهایی که دکتر مهدی خزلی زد اونقدر مهم بود که برخی از چیزها رو میشد نادیده گرفت. با این حال از اینکه باعث ناراحتی تعدادی از مخاطبان خوب برنامه شدیم متاسفیم و امیدواریم که در کنار ما باشند و با راهنمایی های خودشون باعث بشن که برنامه ما روز به روز بهتر بشه تا درودی دیگر بدرود